I would say I'm most inspired by nature. Pretty much any piece of art that I've done, I try to incorporate some sort of nature theme, whether it's plants or flowers or just the environment that I live in. I feel like that's a really big theme throughout my artwork. Um, and then I'm also really inspired by music. So I can listen to music and I'll have like a certain type of feeling when I listen to it. And then that kind of shows through my artwork. Um, so when I'm working on a project, I almost always have headphones in. My name is Lauren and I'm an illustrator. I got into graphic design in 2012. I had the opportunity to go to India um, for a two week trip. I went to work in some orphanages there and I needed to raise money to get out there. And so I had taken a metals class in college and I loved making jewelry. And so I was like, I'm just gonna start my own jewelry business but I didn't know anybody that could do branding or anything like that. So I designed a logo and business cards and all that. And looking back, they were awful. Um, but that was kind of my first leap into graphic design. And at the time, I didn't really think anything about it. Like, oh, it was fun, but it wasn't something that I necessarily thought that I was gonna pursue. When I was a teacher, I taught for four years. And I would say I was unhappy for like the last three years of teaching. It just wasn't my thing and I don't even necessarily know what it was that like flipped the switch but I was like graphic design I want to pursue that and so I said you know if I'm going to do this I like really want to dedicate myself to it. When I quit teaching I worked in a couple of different coffee shops around town and I was able to do some of their um, chalkboard art one of their um, employees walked into the tea shop that I worked in and saw the chalkboards that I had created. And she sent me an email and she said, you know, I saw your artwork and uh, we really love it. We want to talk to you about maybe hiring you to do some graphic design work, which I don't know if she even knew that that was kind of what I was trying to pursue. And so I went and met with her and met with um, Bobby, the chef, who's also the owner. And they sat down and kind of said like, we're looking to rebrand. We want to have more of a social media presence and we don't really have a graphic designer. Like Bobby can do graphic design. He's good at it, but he's got a million other things to worry about. So that's not really what his priority is. And so they were like, you know, is this something that you think that you could do with us? And it was my first big client. And so I was like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I hadn't really ever had a consistent client. It was more project to project. Um, and so I was like really excited about the opportunity to have a repeat client. Yeah, ever since I've been working, I've been working with them ever since. We, um, they give me graphic design work. I do their menus and any posts that are on social media, anything that has illustration or graphic design, I do for them. So we've kind of been able to build a relationship which I love. That's something that's really important to my work um, is the relationship aspect. So that's been really cool. So when a client comes to me and they want me to do a piece of artwork for them, so I'll send them some questions like, um, you know, what does your business name mean? Um, how does your business stand apart from others? What are your core values? Because that's really important um, in the design aspect of what I do. Probably the longest part of the process is brainstorming the ideas. And from there, I'll just do some rough sketches and then we kind of move on from there until we have a finished product. So my goal is for my client to feel as involved in the process as they want to feel. Um, if they want to just let me take the reins, then I'm happy to do that. But I also want them to know that like I see it as a collaboration um, so that from the start to the end they are super involved in it. What I like about commission work is that it is an idea that the client has that's very specific and then I'm able to kind of make that vision come to life in my own style. I would say the hardest part of Art in general is coming up with an idea or trying to figure out what it is that you want to create. And so with a commission, the client already knows kind of what they want. So it's almost like when you're in school and your teacher gives you a specific project and she's kind of already done the hard work for you because she's giving you, you know, what you're supposed to do and all you have to do is like just take that and run with it. So I think that's why I enjoy commission pieces so much because it gives me freedom but also gives me direction.
Hey, how you doing? I'm good, how have you been? Busy as can be. Good. So, I have a project. All right. You're gonna crush it. I can't wrap my head around this thing, I need your help. Okay. So, I'm looking for a way to tell our guests exactly how we, as a team, and me, as a business owner, feel about them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with a lot of businesses, they have an intended journey. Ours starts with curiosity, then excitement, mm -hmm. and then it goes into memories, and then nostalgia. But really, we're not successful until we reach ritual. Right. So, how do I explain how you will feel when you're well taken care of by mm -hmm. True Blue? Mm -hmm. Through art. Right. Let's see. In getting a feel for the piece, can you tell me a little bit about the name True Blue, what it represents, how you came up with the name, all that kind of stuff? Sure. It's a great part of our story. It was a Saturday morning. I'll never forget it. Um, I googled the words trustworthiness, and that's what I want my customers to think of our business. Right. They want. I want them to trust us. And up comes the words True Blue. And immediately I was excited. I thought, that's a cool word. Yeah. And, but I had to vet that a little bit. I do live in North Carolina and it could be Duke <laughs> or it could be Carolina Blue, but I quickly got past that. But decided I should do the research on where that came from. And this is where it gets really cool. 16th century Coventry, England. They were always, the ladies and the fashionistas were looking for a garment or a dye that wouldn't fade. Uh, and some little boutique figured it out. And it was that dye, that technology, that linen that inspired what is now known as, as the modern day chef's apron. Right. Blue and white pinstripes, and of course, obviously, they need to wash it every day and it needs to look brand new. Right. I already knew True Blue was gonna be a butcher shop and restaurant, mm -hmm. and now that had tied it all together. Sure, okay. Do you have any specific images that you have in mind, or do you want to invoke more of like a feeling with artwork? Certainly a feeling. Okay. It can't be pictures of food. Mm -hmm. Can't be art of food. That never works. Food doesn't say anything. Right. And that's where I get stumped. Yeah. I keep going to our title and how it was created and how can I tell that story mm -hmm. through imagery. Right. Okay. So we want to create something that the customer looks at and they say, that's true blue. Not just the building, not just the food, but the experience. Yeah. And the feeling I have when I'm there. The feeling that I have when I'm there that I crave when I'm not. Right. Okay. And and I think I think that's ultimately what I want to achieve with every customer. Well, I think we can definitely come up with something cool for that. I know you can. You're going to crush it. Yeah. So, this is it. Okay. It's big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it competes with the kitchen. A lot of action over there, but I really want people looking at this wall and feeling everything that we talked about earlier. Yeah, I like it. I think in order to take up a lot of space, maybe like two large canvases side by side. I trust you. Cool. You're gonna crush it. All right. Seeing the space, I realized that one canvas is probably gonna be a little too small. I could do one large canvas, but I think it would be a little bit cooler if I do two canvases side by side. Um, so they'll both still be large, but I think they'll take up a little bit more space, but they'll have the same color palette and the same theme so that it won't seem like just two random pieces of artwork hanging up there. Um, but yeah, once I saw the wall, I realized that the canvases need to be a little bit larger than what I had in mind. So we're going to make this a little bit bigger. I love shopping at Michael's. It is like a kid in a candy store. So I actually have to give myself a pep talk before I go in because otherwise I will buy way more than I actually need. <laughs> so I have to make a specific list. But I love going in to Michael's and just seeing all the different products because it just shows you, like, I don't know, you start thinking about the endless possibilities of what you could create. So that's why I love being there. It is inspiring in its own way. So my materials for the project um, include canvas. I want to use some sort of paint that's gonna be really smooth. So I'm thinking maybe something that is a little bit more liquid based, maybe even an ink, um, rather than just an outright paint. Since we're doing a lot of illustration for this piece as well, I want to be able to do maybe a paint pen instead of normal paint so that I can get in there and do a lot of fine details. And lastly, I'll be using some collage paper with a Mod Podge or some sort of glue to keep it on there 
um, so that it still has that smooth kind of appearance with the paint as well. So for this project, I will be doing a mixed media piece. My goal is to put two canvases next to each other, um, kind of a modern play on a diptych, so they'll go together and have a common theme. The name of the company is True Blue, and so the artwork is going to be an all blue palette. So I want it to have kind of like a dreamy and nostalgic feel. So I want to use like really smooth kind of materials. And then moonlight or lighting is going to play a big part in the pieces as well so i want to get some sort of like collaged material maybe like a shiny paper or something to put on the parts that are supposed to be illuminated so um, that you really get that feel of like i don't know a dreamy kind of nostalgic feeling So I'm used to working on a smaller scale. Um, since I do a lot of digital illustration, I can zoom in as much as I want to on the image. But with larger, like handmade illustrations like this, since I'm such a perfectionist, so I want to make sure that all the lines are right. So I went ahead and drew it out digitally first and got all the colors ready and all that kind of stuff. And I am projecting it onto this canvas so that I can make sure that all the lines are exactly how I want them. These paint pens are pretty sweet because I can outline and add detail to the design, which I would have done with a really, really tiny paintbrush and paint, and it would have taken way longer, and also probably wouldn't have been as smooth. So it's nice to be able to use this instead. Right now I'm deciding to add more texture lines using the ink pen. Since I actually really enjoyed the way it worked with the outline, I was like, what else can I do with it? So I'm just gonna kind of play around and do some more illustration on top of the paint and just kind of see where it ends up. And I think that will give it a little bit more character. My favorite technique when I first started would have just been a pencil and paper. I just really like to draw um, realism, kind of. And now I would say my art is a little bit more representational, so I like to use colors and images that represent a feeling instead of just being so literal. Um, so now, I'm, I never took painting in college, so I always steered away from painting because I thought, well, I don't know how to do that, I'm not that good at it. It's still not my forte necessarily, but it's what I enjoy doing the most. So I love using bright colors. I love using heavy outlines. Um, and so it's been quite a transition from pencil and paper. And I'm glad that I made the leap because I feel like that also reflects in my digital art as well, because it's still playing with bright colors. It's just on an iPad. I think one of the reasons I'm so inspired by nature is because I have just always been drawn to more organic shapes and textures and colors just I don't know I think it's just the most beautiful thing that you could possibly look at and I think part of it too stems from being in a natural environment and just the way it makes me feel so I want to try to recreate that in my artwork I used to draw mostly like 
mountain-related imagery. Lots of trees, lots of mountains. And although I still do that, I have started tying in more coastal themes as well, which is cool because it's opened up a lot of doors for my work on this side of the state. It's very surreal for me to think about where I came from and how I didn't know if this was something that was going to actually work out or if I was going to do it for a month and be broke <laughs> or if I was going to be able to pay my bills. Um, and now I'm so busy that I'm scheduling people like months in advance, which is just insane. And so I, when I start to feel overwhelmed with my work, I just put in perspective like, I wasn't always here and I am super thankful that I have been able to do this because this is really like, I'm so happy. I love my job. I work more now than I ever did when I was teaching, but I just, I absolutely love it. I would say I'm a little nervous about the mixed media part of this piece. Um, since I have pitched that to the client, I obviously want to be able to follow through with that, um, but I haven't done a ton of collage, which is what I want to include in this, but I just want to make sure that the piece still looks cohesive. So I'm a little nervous about how that's going to go, um, but if it doesn't work out, then I will just, I will just figure something else out. <laughs> I am currently cutting out pieces for the collage. Um, I am using this kind of white shimmery paper for any places on the paintings that have illumination so that it just kind of picks up a little extra light um, whenever it shines on it and gives that kind of that like warm glow feel. So working on a lot of circles. The cool thing about art is that when different people look at it, they still can each have the same feeling about it. It kind of provides like a shared experience for different people who have different backgrounds and um, you know different life experiences. They can look at an art piece and have the same shared moment, which I think is really cool. So I am a perfectionist and I want my art to be perfect, but I'm also human and I'm not a robot. So that's something that I've had to kind of come to terms with um, through this process that what I do is not going to be perfect, but it's kind of beautiful that it's handmade. You can see that it, you know, there may be an imperfection here or there, but that's what makes it beautiful in its own way. But also you are your harshest critic. And I realized that you know, generally the person that's hiring you to create the art is hiring you because they can't do it themselves. So they're seeing what you can produce and they're like in awe of it almost. And so you just kind of have to go into it with that attitude like, yeah, they hired me for a reason. You know, they trust me. They know that I'm going to do the best job I can do. All right. Bobby, I'm super excited to show you these paintings. I think that they fit the space perfectly. I think they fit the vision, what you were telling me perfectly, and I'm just super excited. I cannot wait, I'm freaking out. You ready? Yeah, let's go. All right, let's do it. Wow. That is, oh my gosh, that is so good. So I tried to capture, I want to do an all blue palette and I think just getting that feeling of community in a more general way with the outline of the city and the ocean and then in a more intimate way with the gathering of people, I think we kind of managed to get that feel. Wow, this is so perfect. Cool. <laughs> oh my goodness, I have to tell you, it went beyond true blue. Like, the moment I looked at this, panel with the cityscape of Wilmington and the beach. It reminded me of, honestly, the very first moment I stepped foot in Wilmington that would eventually create my entire life path. Mm -hmm. And then when I look over at the second panel and see community brought right to the surface, it's, 
unbelievable. It's completely perfect. Oh, that's awesome. That makes me so happy. I'm so glad. Wow. How do you do it? <laughs> I listen to what you tell me. <laughs> unbelievable. Thank you so much. Of True Blue, the whole team, the community, they're going to love this. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lauren. That is so perfect. Seeing the client super excited about this piece just makes me even more excited and makes me want to do more projects. It's just reaffirming kind of that you're doing the right thing when you see how excited somebody gets about your artwork and that it touches them as much as it like touches you, you know? If it means as much to them as it means to you, then that's, I feel like I've achieved the goal that I set out, you know, to do. My favorite aspect of the finished painting is I think I was able to really achieve the feeling of nostalgia um, through the colors that I use, through the techniques that I use. I think I was able to really capture that feeling of like remembering a good time. Um, since the piece is so much about like community and gathering, I wanted that to come across in the piece. Um, that's one of the you know core values of True Blue is like you know getting people together, having an intimate gathering, um, and then remembering the memories that you made there. And so I wanted to be able to portray that through the artwork, and I think that I was able to do that, so I'm pretty excited about that.